This is Hitoyoshi from Samurai Tavern. In this channel, we explain science behind the Japanese culture and also tried some experiments or demonstrations to deeply understand the culture. Yoroshiku onegaishimasu. Today, I'm going to do an experiment to know how hard the Japanese sword blade is. The technologies used for making the Japanese swords were established over a thousand years ago, where the concept of science was not developed like recent years. However, they still impress us. I think one of the most interesting technologies used for making Japanese sword is in the process to make hamon. As you can see, the pattern of hamon is really beautiful and it has important meanings in the artistic aspects. But do you know it's practical aspects. The area of hamon includes blade part, which means it must be very hard material to assure the sharpness of the sword. How do I test the hardness is? I will use these. I will hit with these nails or screws and see how deep I can scratch the materials. I prepared three of these with different hardness. First one is a nail made of iron. Second one is made of stainless steel with high carbon content. Third one is made of stainless steel with high carbon content and treated by the hardening process, which is super hard. I think the third one is one of the hardest type of screw that you can see in your daily life. All of them have almost the same thickness, but the hardness increases in this order. Then, fix the sword on the wood and hit with the nails. Instead of the real sword, I prepared this, this material. This is a modern steel called SK85 in Japan, which contains 0.85% of carbon in iron. So the material is very similar to real Japanese sword. Of course, precisely, the impurities or carbon content is a bit different from the real Japanese sword, but I think we can still see the similar features in our experiment today. But the problem is how I can imitate the part of hamon with this material. I will use the same process as Japanese swordsmiths use for making Japanese sword, which is called yakire in Japanese. In yakire process, a steel will be heated up until it is red and immediately cool down into the water. For more detail, please check our previous video. I included the link in the description. Now I will cut out two steel birds from here and prepare one with yakire and another one without yakire. Let's see how hard the Japanese sword blade is. This steel bar has 2 mm thickness, which is thicker than the thickest Japanese coin. It's like this. And much harder than that. I definitely cannot cut this easily. So I will use this hard rod, which I shaped the top by myself. This is to gradually scrape the surface of the steel bar like this. Okay, let's try. I finally cut out two of these steel bars, but the edges are rough and some parts are very sharp. And also, there's a lot of scratches on the surface. Now, I will make the edges smooth and polish the surface. First, I use the file to make the edge smooth. Next, I will polish this. Now 
you can see there are almost no deep scratches on the surface. Next is the Akire process. Here I'm gonna hit both of them until they become red. One of these bars will go through the Akire process. I will cool down this bar, the one with this mark, really fast by putting it in the water. Another bar will be cooled down slowly by leaving it on the hot brick. This will not become harder. Let's do it. I leave it here. The surface color changed because of the steel oxidization. I will again try to polish them to clear the result I will get later. I finally prepared two bars and marked three circles where I will hit by each nail or screw. This is to fix the steel bars. Once it is heated up, the surface got soft and when it's cooled down, it will get hard. Okay. First, I will hit lightly. The point of both iron nails became completely flat with only one hit. The steel bars is so hard. How is the surface of the bars? In both cases, basically, they have almost no damage. But I can see a tiny scratch on the one without Yakire. I may make a deep scratch if I try to hit harder. The nails became like this. The point is of course flat and it looks like they completely lose their motivation. For the bars, I can see a very slight scratch on the one without Yakire, but both of them looks almost intact. Even when I use the microscope to magnify the area, I can see a very shallow scratch and the surface of the bar with Yakire is hard to recognize where I hit. Just by changing the angle of the light, I can barely see the scratch. This result is quite reasonable because iron tends to become harder when it has more carbon content. The carbon atoms act as a stopper for the iron atoms to slip in the steel. In the experiment, the steel bars have carbon in it and the nails do not, so that's the reason why the bars have no damage. But I'm so impressed with the result because in Japan, people usually call just tetsu to express iron and steel without distinction. However, the results show that steel is much much harder than the iron. Compared with the iron nail, this is much harder because of the carbon. I think this should damage the steel bars. I will hit lightly. Oh! This time I got different feelings. The top of this screw is still a little bit pointy. On the other hand, here the point of the screw is completely flat. The bar without Yakire is definitely have damage than that of before. But the bar with Yakire looks it has only shallow scratch like before. Let's hit harder and more times. Go. Both of the screws are like this. Each point is completely flat. Unfortunately, the screw in the left side was decapped. The one in the right side has a head but completely deformed. Now looking at the steel bar, the one without Yakire clearly has a hole at the center of the circle. On the other hand, the one with Yakire has only slight scratches. By taking a closer look with the microscope, 
The area hit by the screw is considerably curved in, and the surroundings are heaved and shaped like a mountain. But the one with the Akire, the area hit by the screw looks just rough. This is really surprising because these two steel bars have the same material. They only went through the different processes. Finally, this screw is super hard. I will hit lightly first. The point of the screw is still pointy in the left side and flat as always in the right side. Can you see the hole on the bar with that yakide? But it seems like this screw is still not hard enough to make a deep scratches on the steel with yakide. I will try to hit harder. The screws are completely bent and the bars look like this. As you can imagine from the microscopic view of the surface of this bar, uh, which the screw caved in and surroundings are heaped, every time I hit the bar without yakire, I could feel that I was digging a hole. But I feel the one with yakire always repel the screw to go in. I cannot believe Yakire process make a steel this hard. I think I cannot make a deeper scratch no matter how many more times I try. So I will finish this. Here is a summary. There is almost no damage on both steel bars after hitting with iron nails. Stainless screw and hardened stainless screw can make a hole on the bar without Yakire. It can dig around 1mm by every single hit. However, none of which can make a deep scratch on the steel bar with yakire. They can only dig around 0.1mm even after hitting several times by hardened stainless screw. From the result, the hamon which is produced through the process of yakire makes the blade of the steel unbelievably hard. Nowadays, the principle of how yakire affects the steel is well studied and revealed. So the process is applied to many things which needs to be hardened. For example, soles, files, pliers and hammers are the most common tools around us, which is hardened by yakire. Yakire is a very complicated technique because many factors, for example, temperature control and the material in itself changes the hardness of the steel very easily. This topic has more interesting contents which I didn't include in this video. I will make another video that explains the content deeper next time. Thanks for watching. We are very happy if you'll have more fun with Japanese cultures. Please subscribe to our channel and see you next time.